Good morning, how are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit. Welcome back to another video. And today we're gonna to answer a question sent by Tyler that's all about poker software. So Tyler asked the following. Hello James, I'm fairly new to using Flopzilla, HoldEQ, and Equilab. I'm getting better understanding how to use the software each day. However, I feel like the functions of these pieces of software overlap sometimes, meaning they can do the same thing. I get that Flopzilla can't do range versus range and Equilab can't use filters, but I'm a little confused as to what each of these can do that is unique and how to use these in the most efficient way. Thanks in advance. So I'd say this is a totally fair critique. Honestly, in software that's fairly similar in terms of functionality, you will have a lot of overlap between different software options. For instance, when it comes to like tracking software, Poker Tracker 4 and Holder Manager 2 are very, very similar in terms of what they can do. Now, I have preference towards one or the other, but again, there's a lot of overlap. They track stats, they show HUDs, you can do different filtering and analysis within the software. So again, very, very similar, lots and lots of overlap. Same thing with equity, kind of software or calculators like Fobzilla and or Equilab. Same thing when you're looking at GTO solvers like GTO Plus and Pio, there's a lot of overlap in those softwares too. Now that being said, really good software should have some things that make it unique and differentiate itself even from software that it may have a very overlapped feature set with. For instance, you have something like Flop Falcon, which does flop analysis in a far different way than anything else out on the market. So yes, it does hand versus hand and hand versus range and range versus range kind of equity calculations, but it it does it in a unique way since it can show you hit versus hit, miss versus miss, hit versus miss, and stuff like that, which is very, very useful if that's the kind of analysis you're doing. So look for what the unique differentiator is. For instance, Poker Tracker 4 is far faster than Hold a Manager 2. That's very, very valuable for me. You have something like Pio, which has scriptability. So if you're looking for a GTO solver that has that kind of functionality, that's unique, that's different, and that might be something that you prioritize. So you really got to think about what you're going to be using the software for understanding what the unique differentiators are. Yes, a lot of software has a lot of overlapped feature set. They just look slightly different, different coats of paint that give you the same information. But understand, especially if you're going to spend good solid money on software, what the unique differentiators are and is it going to help you solve the problems that you're looking to solve. Now, I do want to make one quick point because I am a little bit nitty when it comes to this kind of stuff. But in the original question, Tyler made two points that I just want to quickly clarify. First is he said that Flopzilla could not do range versus range, this is actually incorrect. You can do it. I understand when you open up Flopzilla, it looks like you can only do hand versus range, so I totally get where you're coming from, but if you use a free add-on for Flopzilla called Hold EQ, you can actually open up multiple instances of Flopzilla, sync them up with Hold EQ, and do range versus range, or range versus range versus range. All of this is totally, totally doable. And by the way, I'll leave links for all the software tutorial videos I made on the software down in the description box below. And one other point in the original question is that that Equilab can actually do filtering. So if you're looking at things post-flop, hit the little pie chart button and you can actually get a very similar looking kind of filter set as you do even in Flopzilla. So again, you have to really, really understand your software, dig around a little bit, and you can even find some really, really overlapped stuff if you look around, poke around a little bit. And keep in mind that some software has kind of like upgraded versions, right? So you have like free Equilab and you also have power Equilab, which gives you even more feature set. So be very, very aware of what you're looking to solve and what your software actually can do. And if you have any questions on that, you can always use the forum, redshippoker.com slash forum, ask questions about what you're trying to accomplish with software, or hey, does my software do this? And they'd be happy to help you out. And this all kind of brings me to the most important thing when it comes to software, be it tracking software, solving software, calculating software, whatever it is, is use software that you understand, you understand how to set up the problem, you understand how to find the output, and you understand how to find answers efficiently. So Fobzilla gets me most of the way there for most of the questions that I have and the analysis I want to do. About 90% of the time, it's probably the software I go to first. But I also have other software available if I need to do more complex stuff or more precise stuff. I might use GTO Plus. I might use something like Flop Falcon if I'm trying to do very, very advanced flop analysis. But ultimately, I need to have software that I understand how to use, understand how to set up my problem, and understand how to get to the output that I understand and control 
trust very, very quickly and efficiently. And this is also why I don't test out a whole bunch of brand new software because I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time learning a new piece of software only to find out that it does 99% of what I can get done in another software. If I'm going to try a new software, it needs to have a very, very good USP and it needs to be something that is going to help me answer questions that I'm looking for answers to. A lot of the times people are trying out software and they just don't need it, right? If you're playing micros online, you don't need a very complex GTO solver. You just simply don't. And spending a whole bunch of time learning how to use a GTO solver probably isn't going to be your best spend of time. There are other things you could prioritize in your learning stack that would help you go far further. So again, use software that you understand, not just how to set up the problem, but also how to get the output and understand what you're actually trying to solve and explore. That's going to help you a tremendous amount rather than just using every piece of software. Again, tons of it overlaps anyway, and you're not really helping helping yourself become more efficient off table, nor helping yourself find any new answers. Again, how is that really going to help you at the end of the day? But the big thing to remember with poker software is that it is not a silver bullet. You have to practice with it. You have to understand it. You have to use it often in order to become more efficient with it. And most importantly, you have to understand what problem you're looking for a solution to, and then choose the tool that's going to help you get to that solution. For instance, I'm not going to ask Flopzilla what a GTO check raising range is on the turn. I'm not going to ask GTO plus how often ace king is going to flop a gut shot, right? I have to understand what is the problem that I have? What am I trying to find? What is that solution going to actually benefit me or how is it going to benefit me? And then what software would help me get that answer? So again, be very, very clear on what your problems are, what you're studying, what you're exploring, and then choose software that's going to actually benefit you at the end of the day. So I mentioned earlier that my major piece of software that I tend to turn to is Flopzilla. Honestly, for about 90% of the questions I want answers to, I use Flopzilla. It gets me in the right direction. And I've been using it for so long, it's just kind of second nature. I understand how to do what I need to do. Even the weird stuff that's kind of tough, like some of the weird, like very, very specific filtering on future streets, that is a little bit tricky at first glance, but over time with some practice, with some double proofing, it gets easier, I promise you. And especially when you pair it up with whole DQ, it is very powerful. Especially if you've never really looked into the hold EQ features, it's very, very good. The only issue with Flopzilla is that it is Windows only. So if you are Mac, I went through about a year long period where I was only on a Mac. I still needed my Flopzilla, so I set everything up on my Mac with a VM with a Windows partition on it and was able to use Flopzilla that way. So I'm not gonna go into how to do that, but know that if you are trying to use Flopzilla on a Mac, there are ways to do it, be it a VM or a side loader or whatever it is. There are options available, a little bit of extra steps, but once you get it set up, very, very easy to use. That was super, super important to me. And actually one of the first things I looked for when I was looking to get a Mac was, am I still going to be able to bring that piece of software with me? And just for the record, one of the absolute best ways to get more out of Flopzilla, to work with Flopzilla more between sessions and to use it in a more systematic way is to use it alongside one of my workbooks. Each of my workbooks is set up in a way to help you work on your own range construction, hand reading your opponents, looking at things through a range versus range point of view. This is very, very aggressive technical exploration, but it's the kind of exploration that will help you become a much, much better player and see the game from a much more technical point of view. Each of my workbooks has a Flopzilla edition, which does include a lifetime license to the software, which is good for up to two machines. And it also includes my Flopzilla range presets to help save you some time if you're looking to build things quickly, or at least have a quick starting point for building off some preflop range. You can learn all about my workbooks by visiting splitsuit.com slash work, find the version that's right for you, and use the code YouTube to save $10 off any workbook plus software edition that is right for you in your games. So Tyler, hopefully that answers some questions you had about poker software. Again, you're 100% correct. There's a lot of overlap in poker software, but what you need to do is understand what kind of problems you're looking for answers to, find software that supports that, and also make sure you can use your software and find output efficiently and make sure that you know that it's 100% correct. So if you have any other questions about poker software, don't hesitate to leave it down below. If there's enough people asking for it, I might kind of do like a best of or here are kind of like the seven major pieces of software that I definitely suggest. By the way, there's a full guide all about poker software
offer over at redshiftpoker.com. I'll leave a link in the description box for that, but I'll leave you there for now. Tyler, again, thank you so much for your question. If you have your own poker-related hand or question, you can always ask it at splitsuit.com slash ask. And if you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing to this video, I would massively appreciate that too. Again, if you need anything at all, don't hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, as always, good luck out there and happy grinding.